So keyhole heart surgery isn't really through a keyhole, it's through smaller incisions. So most heart surgery is performed through the breastbone. The breastbone incision is quite a good incision, it's quite a big incision, but it's not a very painful incision. The problem with the breastbone is it involves uh, dividing uh, a bone, and a bone takes 12 weeks to heal up and calcify before it's stable enough. And that does mean that the patient after heart surgery has to avoid many of the normal tasks that one would normally perform uh, in everyday life. No heavy lifting, no getting back to cycling, uh, no sports, that kind of stuff. Uh, and it's the sort of thing that young patients particularly are, are not keen on. Many of the keyhole or minimally invasive incision strategies that we can now employ avoid breaking the breastbone. And what we can do is sneak in between ribs to repair heart valves or even to do uh, coronary artery bypass grafting. Most people think that the benefits of keyhole heart surgery are cosmetic. Well, of course, there are cosmetic benefits. If we have a young lady who has a hole in her heart and we make an incision below her right breast that's hidden, that's a fantastic result for her. She can go around wearing the normal types of wear that ladies would wear without any fear that people can see a scar in the midline. But to be honest, as a doctor, I'm more concerned about what are the real benefits, not just cosmetic, because I think that you know, if we're going to do an operation that takes that little bit longer, that is that bit more difficult, we need more than just cosmesis as an ar argument for doing it. The real benefits of keyhole heart surgery are that the wound heals so much quicker. If we do a small cut here for a hole in the heart or to repair a mitral valve, we're talking 12 days instead of 12 weeks. If we break a bone, that is a huge biochemical demand for the body to heal. So we, we really always underestimate how hard it must be for the human body to heal such a big cut as opposed to a small cut. One of the other things that I've noticed in my clinical practice is, is wound infection. Fortunately, after heart surgery, is very rare. Perhaps 1% of people will suffer this complication, so that's not very frequent at all. If we get a wound infection here, it's not a big deal. But if we get a wound infection here and it gets into the bone, it can be a really big deal. And I think we're then suddenly beginning to see how keyhole heart surgery can reduce the difficulties that patients might face after heart surgery. One of the other benefits of keyhole heart surgery, of course, is if we do an operation through a keyhole and later in life a patient needs their operation or another operation on their heart, then we can go through the breastbone very easily. But if we've been through the breastbone once before, to go through it again is really notoriously difficult. So you can see there are many, many benefits other than cosmetic for keyhole heart surgery. A very interesting question that people ask me, uh, am I suitable for keyhole heart surgery? The, the interesting answer is that many more people than you might expect are actually suitable. I can't really answer that question without meeting the patients. But just to give you an idea of the sorts of treatments that we can provide through keyhole, we can provide keyhole techniques on the left side for bypassing blocks in arteries of the heart. We can do keyhole techniques on the right side for repairing the mitral valve or the tricuspid valve. We can even close holes in the heart uh, atrial septal defects through keyhole incision. We've even taken tumours out of the heart through keyhole incisions. We can treat heart rhythm disturbances through keyhole incisions. And all of these treatments we provide in a manner that delivers an outcome as good as we would expect to be delivered through uh, a much bigger uh, stenotomy incision. The, the real issue here is whether you as a patient are suitable. And the way we answer that is to look at very many different factors your age, your health, whether there's more than one treatment strategy that we need to do so that, for example, if we are needing to repair a heart valve and do bypass grafts, perhaps under those circumstances, a traditional breastbone incision is the best way forward. Although in certain circumstances, there's even a way for us to, del to deliver keyhole techniques that are beneficial for the patient. So in summary, what I would say is speak to your doctor, speak to your surgeon, and they'll They'll give you a good idea of whether you're suitable for keyhole, particularly if they're experienced in keyhole heart surgery. Of course, if you ever want to ask us what we think at the Keyhole Heart Clinic about your suitability, please get in touch with us and we'll be happy to give you our thoughts. One of the drawbacks of keyhole heart surgery is that it is actually a very complicated technique to learn. And it does involve uh, 
A great deal of learning for the whole of the clinical teams in the operating theatre. So my perfusion team have to do, learn the discipline in a, in a way that's different to the way they normally would deliver uh, heart-lung bypass for a patient who's having heart surgery through the breastbone. The anaesthetist has to change many of his techniques. The scrub teams have to change what they do. And of course the surgeon particularly has to change and learn many new techniques that often involve doing surgery on a television screen in two dimensions as opposed to looking directly at the heart in close proximity. Of course you can imagine when we do keyhole heart surgery sometimes we're a long way away from where we're operating and rather than looking at what we're operating on we're of often looking at a screen. These are really difficult disciplines to learn. Once they're learnt however I think surgeons really can deliver on some of the, the benefits. So I think it's very important for patients to ensure that the clinical teams that are offering them keyhole heart surgery have been able to do this for a significant period of time and it's always good to know what volumes of keyhole heart surgery units do, how long they've been doing it, and what their outcomes are. That really will help you to select your keyhole team. The, the other drawback, of course, is that we can not always guarantee that the operation can be completed through the keyhole. So every patient who we see at the keyhole heart clinic will always be warned about the small but real risk that we convert. Now what does convert mean? What it really means is that if we start through a keyhole incision through the right side or through the left side for a bypass graft for example, then during that procedure there may be something that means in order for us to complete that procedure perfectly or to keep things safe we go back to to the breastbone incision. So theoretically there's always a small possibility you can end up with two cuts instead of one. And I think that the majority of patients I see understand and respect that small risk in recognising that that's how they would pursue the benefit that keyhole heart surgery would offer them. If patients are interested in being assessed for keyhole heart surgery they should ask their doctor uh, about this in the first instance. If they don't know the answer and they've been reviewed by a clinician in their heart centre and are due to undergo heart surgery, they should ask their heart surgeon whether or not they perform keyhole heart surgery or if indeed any surgeon in their organisation performs keyhole heart surgery. We at the Keyhole Heart Clinic are always happy to offer advice, both in the NHS and in the private sector, uh, either in terms of uh, offering patients identified units that we recognise as delivering keyhole techniques or indeed if they want to come and speak to us directly about whether or not they are suitable for this. On the home page there's a very simple way for patients or clinicians to contact the clinic either as an NHS patient or as a private patient and one can use those links to get in touch with our clinical teams directly. We have a clinical liaison team that will be able to help you in the, in the initial stages of your assessment and if you need to come and see one of the clinicians in the organisation we'd be more than happy to arrange that at a time that's suitable for you.